Hello everyone, let's uh, have another tutorial on Femap and here we're gonna model a displacement controlled load. Here it is, here is a little sketch of it, our rod and we're gonna have a 0.1 meter displacement. Good, let's get started by drawing our geometry which will be simply a line, uh, coordinates, 0, 0, 0 for one side and let's do 2, 0, 0 for the other there it is, cancel I'm gonna press ctrl Q uh, I'm gonna turn everything off but points and the identity of the curve there you go next uh, let's start, uh, set up the material then the properties okay, so material let's see Material, I don't know, one um, here, leave it isentropic. Uh, okay, let's put the Young's modulus 60E9, Poisson's ratio 0 0.3. That's it. Okay, and cancel now. Model property. This is we're gonna be working with the rod, so let's call it rod one pick the material this is your, the one that we just defined element property type rod right here okay uh, and the area let's make it uh, 2 e negative 3 okay cancel next let's perform the meshing go to mesh mesh control we're gonna see that first so size along curve we're gonna just work with one element so select our line okay number of elements we're gonna work with we're just gonna model it as one element okay cancel and then go ahead and actually mesh it geometry curve curve okay make sure you pick uh, the rod that you set up rod one okay now we have the mesh set up. If you want to turn the, the cyan color shows our geometry. If you want to turn the geometry off, click this button right here, view geometry toggle, and then you have only the white one which is the mesh. Press control Q, labels, and then we can visualize our nodes and elements. Done. There you have it. You want to turn the geometry back on. There you go. Now we can go ahead and set our constraint. Go to model constraint. Let's put it on the point, which means we're gonna apply it to the geometry. Not if we apply it to the node, we would apply it to the mesh. Okay, but if you're working on a bigger job and you, you know, something happens to the mesh, you have to reset it, delete it, start over again. All the children that you apply to the mesh will be deleted with it. So certain things like constraints, maybe loads, this and that, it's good to apply it straight to the uh, geometry itself, like points or curve uh, lines, uh, because then if you have to delete meshes, not all your work goes with it. Some of the things will still remain. Okay, so let's take advantage of our geometry and apply our constraint to the point. Good, let's see boundary conditions okay I'm gonna apply it to the left side we're gonna pin it let's call it left pinned okay on the right side I'm gonna we're gonna block transition in Y and Z but we're gonna allow translation in uh, the X direction right and I'm gonna call it right okay cancel and now comes the most um, interesting part of this video how do we set up the displacement load let's go to model load on point let's call it displacement D for displacement okay point two okay Let's call it a D. Now over here make sure you don't pick a force 
make sure you pick displacement for us it's displacement control loading there's also a option for velocity controlled loading acceleration controlled loading okay for us it's displacement and over here we have a 0 0.1 displacement in the X direction click OK okay now now this this step it even though it's kind of counterintuitive but this is how the software requires it after we applied this displacement controlled load we need to go back and also um, we need to control the constraint the direction along which the motion was imposed this is uh, not just for the displacement controlled also for velocity controlled and acceleration controlled so we need to constrain the direction of freedom associated with the direction along which we imposed this displacement so if, if you didn't get it for the first time what I just said rewind the video a few times and listen to it I'm sure it's like a word salad but do your best to understand it okay all right let's keep going so that means that when we applied the displacement load after it we need to go back to model constraint on point point two okay and we need to constrain the x direction because that's the direction along which our displacement is acting click OK and cancel now we're ready to set up our analysis go to model analysis new call it one and we can't leave it as static even though this is not a non-linear static problem uh, NAST trend FEMAP requires us to select for this kind of stuff non-linear static solution 10 okay so click OK and if we pick something like that we need to go under master uh, nonlinear options not defined click on that and we need to set up how many increments or time steps let's say 10 and down here max iterations let's put another 10 this one's like uh, if uh, you didn't converge in like 10 tries then just give up and end it day and okay and uh, we're ready to run analyze let the software do its thing come on you can do it and if it's gonna give us a nice complete without any fatal errors that means we have successfully completed our model next we can uh, uh, push F5 and let's deform beam diagram and let's represent something our uh, let's a rod axial stress uh, sure let's do that one okay okay and there you have it the undeformed deformed the little dancing icon what is it movie <laughs> And that's about it for this video. Hope you enjoyed learning something new. And uh, like and subscribe. And make sure you tune in for the next one.